coming to you live from digital address GA0992539, also live on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. In our very first story, Minority Spokesperson on Foreign Affairs Samuel Okujetua Blakwa is calling on President Okufuado to break his quote unquote deafening silence on the Ghana US military agreement. It's been two weeks since the story of the agreement broke on this station, but the president is yet to make a public comment on the issue which has generated a lot of controversy across the country and beyond. Mr. Blackwa says in an open letter to the president, and I quote, your silence and stonewalling is undemocratic and not in a national interest. It's quite a lengthy piece, but I'll just bring you some extracts of that letter uh, that he's written to the president. It says, Your Excellency, I'm compelled to write this open letter for your urgent attention due to your rather unusual, strange, and uncharacteristic but determined quote, silence on the most crucial issue agitating the minds of Ghanaians. Thus, quote, the agreement between the government of the United States of America and the government of the Republic of Ghana on defense cooperation, the status of United States forces, and access to the use of agreed facilities and areas in the Republic of Ghana, end quote, which your majority members of parliament defiantly ratified on the 23rd of March 2018 to conclude the processes you and your government initiated. initiated. He goes on to say, say I'm a state from the outset that as has never been in doubt, we in the National Democratic Congress cherish and value Ghana's long-standing relations with the United States of America. It is therefore not surprising that the NDC has hosted two of the three high-level U.S. presidential states visits of this fourth republic. Now, it says, as you well know, Mr. President, just the day before your birthday, precisely on the 28th of March 2018, a mammoth demonstration took place in Accra, which was a culmination of your refusal to listen to the people you serve after weeks of persistent pressure and appeals to you from Ghanaians of diverse backgrounds and varying political persuasion seeking your executive intervention in at least addressing the genuine fears of the people emanating from the agreement in issue. Goes on to say the Put Ghana First demonstration organized by the Ghana First Patriotic Front with support from the Inter-Party Coalition of National Sovereignty and the Minority Caucus in Parliament attracted the masses, progressive forces, students, leaders, unions, experts, high-ranking former public officials, including former Vice President and former Chairman of the Police Council, His Excellency Kwesi Pakwe Emisa Arthur, former National Security Minister, Honorable Kofi Totobi Kwachi, and a host of former ministers, ambassadors, and academics who I humbly submit cannot all be ignorant as your government communicators have arrogantly and offensively sought to portray. Like I mentioned, it's quite a lengthy piece, so we're just bringing you extracts of that open letter from Mr. Okujetu, Okujetu Ablapa to the President of the Republic of Ghana. Says, uh, respectfully, Mr. President, you can therefore understand why most of us are extremely surprised at your sudden belief in silence your silence on the agreement in issue is very much out of character and we are sincerely befuddled everybody is saying this is not the man we have known from Tete quote-unquote that's to say the man we know from the past as you've noticed sir your silence and the attempt to divert attention from the debate on the Ghana US military cooperation agreement by the high-handed and dramatic arrest of Kokua in Itoho, and the change of name of the Flagstaff House to Jubilee House have so far not worked according to plan. As I write to you, sir, discussions on this matter and its related concerns have been escalating both at the domestic level and on the foreign front. The international media, BBC, Reuters, Fox News, Al Jazeera, Alt, and the New York Times, etc., are awash with reports of a general feeling of betrayal of the Ghanaian people by your government and you. Let's just quickly take you to the conclusion of that particular opening letter from Mr. Blackwa to the President. Sir, we must respectfully be concerned also about what the current developments mean for our positive neutrality and non-alignment foreign policy imperatives as other nations are observing these developments closely. 
when President Nkrumah personally presented Ghana's foreign policy for the approval of the National Assembly on 16 December 1959, he remarked, quote, I have always stated that it's our desire to cultivate friendship with all nations and to be enemy to none. In pursuance of our policy of peace and friendship, the government and the people of Ghana are determined not to get themselves entangled in the great ideological conflicts of the great powers. I do hope, end quote, I do hope, Mr. President, that you do not get as entangled by the way and manner you have gone about this military cooperation agreement. Sir, you can always count on our support in the pursuit of Ghana's overarching national interest. With sincere and respectful regard, Samuel Ukujeto Ablakwa. So the full details of that open letter to the president uh, is on myjoyonline.com. You can visit the website and give yourself a good read. But we've been out and about finding out from Ghanaians what they make of this. I think the public has to do more to, you know, come out. It's not only the demonstration. They have to do more. They have to make sure they stop this thing. Because um, look, looking at what is happening in our neighboring countries, especially our uh, Nigerian brothers, you can see how the Boko Haram issues and other things. So whenever this um, U.S. come and, you know, build this their military base in Ghana, it's more like we are becoming enemy to these people. You know, Ghana, our strength is the peace. So right now, they are actually threatening our peace. So to me, I think we need, uh, the public need to do more. Everybody need to do more to make sure President Akufuado um, uh, finally broke up his silence and make sure he declined this deal. It's interpreted uh, silence for something else. But I think it's good they are here because they are not here to harm anyone. They are just here to work uh, with Ghana or something. So I think it's good. So you think it's time he comes out to talk about if, about if he agrees to the... Oh, yeah, he can't keep silence forever. He can't keep being silent forever. He has to say something. He is the head of the country. So he has to say something as a person. I think when he come out to explain himself well, it will help the public out. Because most of us who supported him when he was making a campaign he tell us a lot of things that we think uh, integrity are now in line. but if he come out to clarify it if he's truly think that is the way to go because many of her party members are now telling us that uh, they came and continue a, a contract that was signed by NDC, which I also didn't hear about it before. So I think it will be very, very better that if he comes to explain himself very well. So those were some comments we picked up here in Accra. I'm sure you also have something to say. Uh, just do well to get onto our Facebook page, join News on TV, drop your comments there. You can also drop your comments on this video that we're streaming live on Facebook now, and I'll be glad to share it with the rest of the world. Uh, but we'll be bringing you an update on the Koku and Nidoho case because, as you may be aware, it's closely linked to this agreement. He was commenting on it on a, a, an Accra-based radio station and uh, he's been you know charged with treason for those comments that he made with regards to the u.s ghana uh, cooperation agreement we'll take a quick breather now when i come back i've got updates for you do stay